Hi, I'm Eleanor Heinz, Norsell and Beekeeper Lead Scientist at Resources. Hi, I'm Kirsten McDade, Pollution Prevention Specialist also at Resources. And here we are in Blaine Harbor at the Westman Marine Toxic Cleanup Site. And in this short video, we're going to tell you about how this site became contaminated, how it's going to get cleaned up, and how you can get involved. The Westman Marine site here is actually a Model Toxics Control Act or MACA site that is currently in the draft cleanup action plan review process so you, the public, can actually submit a public comment on what the cleanup action plan looks like before the final cleanup happens. If you want to learn more about MACA and learn more about all these steps along the way, you can click on the notes link down below to watch more about MACA. If you haven't taken a stroll down Blaine Marina, you should add it to your local to-do list. From the public fishing pier located at the tip of the harbor, you get a spectacular 360 degree view of the ocean and the mountains. Drain Harbor, the Coast Range, Semiamo Spit, and of course, iconic Mount Baker. There's a lot going on at this harbor. Seafood processing, marine repair and maintenance, boat storage, recreational fishing, state-of-the-art water reclamation, and of course, walking trails and a very popular playground. A hundred years ago, however, the landscape looked quite different. This used to be an expanse of mudflat and native tidal lands used by the Semiamu tribe, a Coast Salish nation. Their life was oriented towards the sea and they still rely on these waters for cultural practices and sustenance. In 1846, when the U.S.-Canadian boundary was established, the Semiamu were effectively split into northern and southern groups. Semiamu members were forced to choose between the Semiamu and Canada and the Nooksack and Lummi in the United States. This boundary has effectively isolated the Semiamu from traditional villages and fishing sites. The landscape began to change in the 1930s when the tide flats were dredged to create some of the land we see today. The last bit of land was added in the 1950s and some additional dredging occurred in 2001 to make room for more boats. The first industries that were to operate here in the early 1900s, long before the advent of modern environmental regulations and waste management practices. So it is not surprising that past boatyard operations at this site left the area contaminated. The site is referred to as Westman Marine because this industry was operational when initial cleanup efforts occurred. The current tenants, onboard marine services, did not contribute to this legacy contamination. Most boat holes are treated with anti-fouling agents, such as tributylton or copper-based compounds. These substances prevent organisms from growing on the bottom of boats, and you may be able to imagine they are also toxic to marine organisms. Common boat hole maintenance work at the Westman Marine site over time release these compounds into the environment. In addition, boat mechanical repairs done at this site led to contamination from metals, petroleum hydrocarbons, PCBs, and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. The Cleanup Action Plan addresses the removal and containment of these contaminants in upland soils and marine sediments. Fortunately, current best management practices, like working over a tarp as seen here, will help prevent recontamination. Continue watching to learn what has already been cleaned up at this site and what is planned to be cleaned up real soon. I'm here with Ben Howard, an environmental project manager with the Port of Bellingham. The Port of Bellingham owns and operates Blaine Harbor. So, Ben, can you tell us what role you and the port play in the cleanup of this site? Hello, yes, I'm Ben Howard, I'm environmental project manager with the Port of Bellingham. My role in the, in the Westman Marine cleanup is to manage the technical and regulatory requirements to complete the cleanup project. Uh, Landau Associates is the environmental consultant and they're assisting the port with a variety of uh, technical and engineering aspects of the project. The port is the responsible party um, for performing the cleanup and we have an agreement with, uh, with the Department of Ecology to undertake the cleanup action. Some cleanup has already occurred at this site. Can you explain what that activity was and why it was done? Yes, an, an interim action was completed in 2013 and 2014. Uh, during construction of an adjacent uh, building at Boundary Fish. Uh, prior to the building construction, the port conducted soil sampling uh, determined if contamination 
was present in the building footprint. Uh, soil sampling resulted in, in finding metals and petroleum constituents in soil where the building was going to be built. And approximately 420 cubic yards of soil was removed and disposed off-site uh, at an approved uh, disposal facility. And details of the interim action are documented in an interim action completion report. During our last tour for the remedial investigation and feasibility study public comment period, there was a building standing to the left of us. Why was this building removed? Well, the tenant at the site has transitioned to new ownership since the remedial investigation and feasibility study was finalized. Uh, based on tenant operations, they, they didn't remove the building, they really just relocated the administrative building. Um, uh, also, in addition to the, the building, there, there used to be a, a tent structure uh, over the Marine Railway. And that, due to some storm-related damage, that was also demolished, or that was demolished. Um, also, there, there was a web locker adjacent to the, the cleanup site, and that was demolished in, in 2020. Uh, even though that's not necessarily related to the Westman cleanup site itself, um, it is going to be helpful in the future to allow for, for staging areas and more space to, to move around during the cleanup process. Port and vision for this property in the future after the cleanup, and how will the site be protected from getting recontaminated? Yeah, well, the, the property itself is within the Blaine Marine Industrial Area and the port is, is in the process of developing future access improvements and area, general area-wide planning. Uh, this property, the Westman, Westman Marine Cleanup Site, is to remain as its current use. Uh, the boatyard is an important facility within Blaine Harbor. And as with all cleanup sites, it is important to plan and address the potential for recontamination. So following construction, um, a new up-to-date infrastructure will be in place and also the tenant will follow BMPs as required under the boatyard um, general permit. And a majority of the existing contamination is from a period in time when environmental regulations and practices were not in place. So today we have you know, regulations and practices to, to limit recontamination potential. We're here with Chris Matthews, the site manager for the Westman Marine site. Before we start with the technical aspects of this tour, could you give us a quick overview of what exactly the responsibilities of a site manager with the Washington State Department of Ecology are? Site manager's principal responsibility is to facilitate and oversee the state process to clean up contaminated sites. This cleanup is mandated by the Model Toxic Control Act, or MOTCA, which is the law and implementing regulation that governs the cleanup of hazardous waste sites. MOTCA requires a series of specific steps that include formal assignment of responsibility, whether to an individual or to a corporate entity, a legal agreement, either agreed order or consent decree uh, between the state and the responsible party. Um, it's important to define the nature and extent of contamination through remedial investigation. Uh, it's important to determine the most effective and cost-efficient remedy to clean up the site. And that's all summed up in a formal action plan that implements the cleanup activities. And there's also a public review and comment element uh, that goes along with most of these steps that allows the public to have input in the process. And then later as the cleanup process progresses, um, the site manager oversees physical work and compliance measures like groundwater monitoring, surface water monitoring, to ensure that the remedy is effective and protect the human health and the environment. What are the contaminants that are found in the upland unit, and how does the draft cleanup plan address these contaminants? The remedial investigation evaluated upland groundwater and soil. Groundwater sampling found no contamination that posed a threat to marine water or sediment, and site groundwater is non-potable with no beneficial use, so groundwater is not deemed an affected medium at this site. Soil sampling found amounts of metals, uh, arsenic, copper, mercury, uh, as well as some organic compounds, polychlorinated biphenyls, polyaromatic hydrocarbons, and minor amounts of uh, petroleum hydrocarbons in, in shallow soil. Uh, the contaminants that exceed cleanup levels are concentrated in the upper portions of the soil column in shallow soil. 
The Cleanup Action Plan proposes to excavate these contaminated areas and replace the, the ex and fill the excavation with clean soil. Um, in some places there might be a hard cover, uh, an asphalt or a concrete cap, and the excavated soil would be disposed off-site in a RECRA Subtitle D landfill. What are the contaminants that are found in the marine unit, and how does the draft cleanup plan address these contaminants? Sediment sampling in the marine cleanup unit found metals, the arsenic, copper, mercury, and zinc, as well as uh, organic con contaminants, PCBs, PAHs, and TBT. That last TBT is tributyl 10. Uh, that's a marine anti-fouling paint used on boat holes. Levels of contam contamination were greatest in the near shore area of a marine railway that's used by the boatyard for to move vessels in and out of the water for service purposes. The cleanup action plan proposes temporary removal of, of the uh, marine railway and excavation and cleanup of that area, along with a combination of dredge removal and natural recover for sediment in other parts in other areas of the, the cleanup unit. Uh, dredge sediment disposal will, will be determined later in remedial. Hi, Ian Foley, Outreach Planner with the Washington State Department of Ecology. I'm here at Blaine Harbor and Ecology has some important news to share with you about the progress that we're making in cleaning up Blaine Harbor. Two cleanup sites, Westman Marine and CK Fish, both have cleanup documents that are ready for your review during a 45-day public comment period. I hope you were able to join us during one of our uh, outreach events on May 24th. Through a public participation grant from Ecology, Resources hosted an in-person walking tour at noon, and Ecology hosted an online public meeting later that evening. In this video, I'll share with you how you can participate in the rest of the open comment period. The Westman Marine and CK Fish sites that you see labeled here are continuing through Washington's formal cleanup process. The Model Toxics Control Act, or MOTCA for short, is Washington's environmental cleanup law. Public participation is built in at specific steps, highlighted here in this infographic by orange comment bubbles, including the cleanup action plan and legal agreement for the Westman Marine site and the interim action work plan for CK Fish. Not pictured here in the infographic is a State Environmental Policy Act, or SEPA, determination and checklist available for review for both sites. For 45 days, beginning May 22nd through July 5th, Ecology welcomes comments on Westman Marine's Cleanup Action Plan and Agreed Order and CK Fish's Interim Action Work Plan. Both sites also have a SEPA determination available for review. These documents are available for review and digital download from Ecology's Cleanup Site webpages listed here. For other review options, please contact me directly. During this 45-day comment period, you can comment in one of two ways. You can submit a comment directly through Ecology's eComments online form for both sites via the web links here. Or you can submit comments to Ecology's site manager, Chris Matthews, through email or mail. Commenter contact information is optional. However, if you want to receive future notices or responses, your contact information is necessary. Well, thanks for watching. I hope I was able to connect with you during one of our outreach opportunities. If you have any questions about this comment period or any future Ecology outreach, please feel free to contact me via email or phone below. We want to make sure that you stay connected to the progress that we're making in cleaning up Lane Harbor. Thanks again for watching. Take care.